new month to each and everyone. I know most of you will be like, oh, it's the mid of the month. Why are you saying happy new month? I mean, my new month starts today because a lot has been going on with me. And I'm even wearing white today because it's more like you won, you know, it's more like a victorious moment for me. You know, um, my mom came to visit me and she did not come to visit me because she wants to come and enjoy life. She came to visit me because she couldn't see properly, you know, so I had to figure it out. What am I going to do to make my mom see once again? I mean, she has grand children but she can't see them even my sister's wedding she couldn't see whatever that was going on and that was really bothering me a lot so i wanted to fly her to namibia because i did a video on dr indume i don't know if most of you saw that video you know you come somewhere you come after you have done your surgery and then you, i go around you find this woman who came, who, who couldn't see anything. She's sitting down there eating fish and taking out all the bones. There's many thanks you that you get. Doctor, now that I can see, I'm going to work on my field. Doctor, now that I can see, I'm going to see my grandchildren. Doctor, now that I can see um, my pension money. Nobody will take my pension money. I will see my pension money now. This happiness, it, it just fuels you to keep on going back. So I felt like this woman could do the magic and she told me that, yo Maya, you don't need to come all the way to Namibia. My classmate is actually in Ghana. You see, I keep on telling you guys that I'm the African connector, but I never knew that myself would be a beneficiary to the word, the connection. Dr. Ndume introduced the doctor in Ghana. Now she can see. Yes. Hi. So can you see this hand? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> How many? Okay. And the rest is history. My mom can see once again. Can you guys give me music? Because I just want to dance with you all. Oh my goodness. I hope you all enjoy the music and dance right there. Music is so important during storytelling. This is why it's so difficult for YouTubers to choose the right music for you guys. I mean, Sometimes you might be watching a video and you feel so emotional. Sometimes some of the songs that we even use in our videos can break you and you might even feel like you are with us whilst filming the video. This is why I recommend uh, Epidemic Sound to each and every YouTuber out there. finally exposed myself because this has been my secret in my YouTube videos for all the time that I've spent on YouTube and I don't want you to be left out so check out the link in the description you're gonna see the promo code Wadamaya50 use the promo code and have 50% discount on your annual subscription of Epidemic Sound and not just that the first 30 days is also gonna be free for you which means you have one year one month 50% subscription from your favorite village boy, Wade Maya. Now that my mom can see, I can happily continue my Africa to the World project, which is changing the narrative of Africa, one country at a time. So it's time to go to Zimbabwe, but I had to pass through Namibia. You might be like, you've been to Namibia, why are you going back? Yes, I've been there, but don't forget that I promised the people of Namibia that I'm gonna build them a mobile clinic. So if I were to change anything really, it's access to health facilities, even if it's just a mobile clinic. I've been mobilizing a couple of people to get a mobile clinic. I haven't gotten much of it, but hopefully that is really what I would want to it's, get. It is something that you really wanna do. Yes, that's something that I really wanna do because it's not only my village, the Angolan people also come for the clinic. So we love to build a clinic for the people. So it's like, a hundred thousand Namibian dollars, which is roughly ten thousand USD. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm gonna take that upon myself. I'm gonna build the clinic. Is it a what what kind of clinic you wanna build? So we would, ideally, would like a mobile clinic. A mobile clinic. But if it's not mobile, we can just have the building stationed where the health um, professionals mm. can have a place. Mm. Because right now 
when the health people come to my village, they stand under a tree for immunization. People stand under a tree. There is no clinical structure. Mm. So that would really, 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 really change things in my village. And I'm a man of my words, even though there are a bit of challenges that are happening, but I had to go get the visa so that I'll be able to go to Namibia once again since I'm heading to the Southern Africa just to go and see how we'll be able to start a project before I get out of Namibia once again. But hey, the High Commissioner from Namibia to Ghana, I think she adores me. Man, everybody in there adores me because they've seen the work that we've done before. It's by force to consume made in Africa product. No. That's what we need to do. We need to, as I always say, we need to consume what we produce. So we are just advocating for the same philosophy. And I was so happy the fact that um, you guys um, imported made in Namibian beef to Ghana. When I saw the news, I was like, yes. wow. Yes. What really inspired that? Well, as I said um, a couple of days ago, uh, what inspired us is the Pan-African spirit. That's the ideology that drove the founders of the organization of uh, African unity, that following political independence, the second stage of, uh, of uh, uh, emancipation should start, and that is economic emancipation. Africa is a continent that is well endowed with natural and mineral resources. My Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of International Relations always say Africa is rich, but Africans are poor. Hmm. Which means all we need to do is to change the mentality. We must add value to what we have. And we must take an interest to what we produce. I, I, I'm just hoping that a, a Namibian businessman will be inspired so that he will come and take the share butter, the fine. cocoa, everything, and take it to that Namibia. Is, but, you know, I think when I went to Namibia, I realized that meat is so affordable in Namibia. Yeah, it is. But in Ghana, not everyone can afford. So does it mean that like, the meat is going to be affordable in here since it's being imported from Namibia? Well, I will leave that to the importer. But, you know, <laughs> uh, I'm sure he would want to make sure that everybody in Namibia who want to taste Namibian, I mean in Ghana who want to taste Namibian beef or meat because beef, the cow has so many parts. Mm. Uh, you may go for the ram steak. If you don't want the ram steak, you may also go for the tribe, you know, and all that. Before I leave you, what is your message for Africans? The message for Africans yeah. is that uh, now that we have the African continental free trade area, we must put life into that agreement by trading among ourselves, by increasing intra-African trade so that we can benefit for our, from our resources, especially the SMEs, which are driven by young women and young men. The AFTC is an institution that exists already. Yes. I mean, it's been in existence for almost two years now. Two years now. Right? Do you think it's really playing that role that it's supposed to play? I think it will. It's a process. The good thing is that we have all signed on to it. It's already an achievement. For the past year, the senior officials have been negotiating to put various protocols in place so that when we begin to trade in earnest, we do it as we have agreed and everybody benefits. After the videos from Namibia, what, what happened there? Did they have any effect on it? Yeah, they did, because uh, after that actually we've been getting a lot of um, applications, no visa applications, people wanted to go and visit Namibia. Well, a lot of people don't really know much about Namibia. Uh, some probably never even heard of it. So when they watched the videos, we got a couple of them like, no, we, we are here because of the Maya. Yes, Whoa. yeah, yeah, we're coming from YouTube. We watch videos <laughs> and we're so surprised and impressed that there's such a country in Namibia that's like more like Dubai. <laughs> yeah.
Personally, I get shocked when I, I go to certain countries and I see the hidden game of those countries. Yeah. But Namibia really shocked me. You're surprised. Oh my goodness, Namibia. Every video that I did from Namibia came from my heart. I, I did not yeah, fake it anything. The first time ever yeah, it was the first time. Mm -hmm. And I go there and I'm like, what? What made you to actually want to go to Namibia? Like, what made you just decide that when you see this country? Is it that you, you, you did some research on Namibia? No. Or you had friends who are Namibia? No. No, I've never done any research about any African country. It's actually my goal to travel every African country. So it was time for me to go to Namibia. Okay. But I was not expecting what I saw when I went to Namibia. Mm -hmm. You see, and now I feel like going back. Even the villages in Namibia. What, what exactly were you expecting when you got there? Like, you know, before you so, so when we go to certain countries, mm -hmm. it's so difficult to bring the beauty out of that country because Okay, we say Africa is beautiful, but some countries, I feel like the people deserve better yeah. in terms of development and all of that. So when I went to Namibia, would you ever believe if I tell you that this is my favorite place in the entire Namibia? I was not expecting to see an African country that developed. Yeah. Don't, don't get me wrong, I mean, there's some countries that we go, we struggle to bring the positive image out. We struck by Namibia, everywhere we passed, there was a positive image. Imagine. Everywhere. And imagine this is a country that just came independent in 1990. You see, no? and I, I, I was, I met Namibians that were complaining about Namibia. And I'm like, you know, one thing that I keep telling people. You, you only appreciate your country when you go out. Thank you. When you visit other African countries. Thank you. That's when you go Thank and you. go home. Thank and you. you really, really uh, and I, I think thing. the country that people need to know that also Kenya. Mm -hmm. Like the people of Kenya really complains really a lot about, about Kenya. Kenya. And I'm like, you guys, I, I feel like you don't even know what you have. No, they don't. No, honestly, like, like we do really get a lot of... Namibians complain bitterly, but I always tell these people: <laughs> you guys travel, travel and see. Travel and see. They need see. exposure. Exposure is very, very important. Thank you. You need to go. Out Thank there. you. You're right. Yeah. You're right. Because we also have this perception of people like you know wanting to go to Europe. I've lived in Africa. I mean, in, in Europe for so many years, so I know what's there. Yeah. So you you get people wanted to leave Africa to go to Europe, you know, for greener pasture and all that. You call there and nothing. You do three, four, five jobs for you to actually get by. And there's so, so many opportunities in Africa. You can do so much. Yeah. Opportunities are there. I think, I think it's more like uh, we need to educate our own we people. To, yes. And the politicians are also not trying for us. Uh, in the yeah. way of educating us. It's okay. just themselves and their families. <laughs> I'll keep on saying the truth whether they like it or not. I'm not a big fan of politicians, but I love them. And I'm coming to Namibia and I believe that this time around I'm going to meet the president of the country. I just love the fact that Namibians really appreciate the work that I do. Listen, all I did was to come with my passport and the visa is right in here. I'm going to Namibia once again. They gave me a long-term visa, but I couldn't enter Namibia and it expired. And I came back for another one. But this time around, I'm going to make it happen because I just want to go to Namibia and enjoy Kapana. Thank you. Well, all what I'm saying is Africans, we need to listen to this guy Whatever he's saying, I am so grateful. I didn't know there was a hidden Africa. This guy has exposed Africa to everybody. We didn't know Accra is beautiful like this. This guy has been showing the beautiful side of Africa. And living in the UK for 32 years, whoa, I tell you, I was only watching the miserable side of Africa where these charity people yeah. use to get money from to, yeah, from Europe, they go and beg and get money. But this guy tells us that Africa is not like that. Mm. Africa is not that poor. You know, so I what can I say? I will advise everybody to watch your videos, listen to 
your messages and then look back to this rich country, rich continent that we all come together and build it. Wow. We, we have to build Africa together. Yes, we can build it. We don't have to wait for someone to build Africa for us. I'm preparing to come back soon. So ah, we are waiting for you, eh? <laughs> And then one time, somebody came from Canada and asked me, are you Wadimaya? Because they tell you Wadimaya is a race. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> you see, that's why some, some people, that's what they think. If they see us, you know, they say, are you Wadimaya? Are you? Because they know you. You know, they, it's like, you know, they think everybody, you know, is Wadimaya. You see, so uh, I'm so very happy, you know. Uh, and I'm so proud of you. Everything you are doing, you know, it's very, very, very good. Thank you. Very wonderful. Thank you. Yeah, I want to see you, you know, since like three to four years, you know, ago. But uh, <laughs> I can't even talk because I see you. Oh, <laughs> 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 yeah, well, that's that's really good. You know? mm. That's really good. I'm yeah. so very happy. You see, you know, you man. just make my journey. Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Are you going back to Togo today? Yeah, I'm going back today. Oh, wow. Good morning to you all. It feels so good to be back again on the camera. It's been one good man without being in front of the camera. Can you guys believe it? And I want to thank you all so much for watching all the stock footages that we've been uploading. The videos that you've been watching these days, they are all old videos because, I mean, I've been through a lot this month. And I thank God everything is okay right now. And we are back again on your screens. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe and be part of the awesome channel. Yeah, it's a brand new month and um, you know where we're going? We're heading to Zimbabwe tomorrow. Today is actually the last day. My mom has been with me for the past one month. Yeah, I mean, she was not okay, but now I think she's perfectly fine. You see the car behind? You see the car behind? So my mom is around. So today being the last day, I scheduled a TV interview with uh, Ghana Broadcasting Corporation. It's the oldest TV station in Ghana. So I have um, an interview with them. So my mom is around and I just wanted to come along with me as I spend the whole day with her. Probably going to show her a bit of Accra and its surroundings, things that are happening in this city. And um, I don't know what to tell you guys, man. You want to say hello to my mom or you just want us to go together? You want to say hello to Auntie Maggie? Auntie Maggie. Hi. I'm in Canada. <laughs> <laughs> Auntie Maggie, say hi. Hi. Auntie Maggie, how are you doing now? I'm good. You're good? Yes. I love your shade. Thank you. <laughs> All right. So, come with me. Let's go. That I should have Mom is saying I should comb my hair. See, African mom always checking all the details. I like your hair. Yeah, yeah that's okay. right. I'm missing hair. What the hell? What's the so? <laughs> <laughs> He is Africa's most influential YouTuber, but he also describes himself as that annoying village boy. Wodimaya is my guest. Wodimaya, ni hao. Ni hao, kafi. How are you, man? I'm good. How are you? A day like my name. It's good to have you here. Why do you call yourself an annoying village boy? I know I'm annoying. I shout a lot whenever I'm on camera, mm -hmm. and I don't want you to come and comment and say, who is that annoying boy? So I need to just describe myself before you leave that as a comment. So, what's the mission? The chain, to change the narrative of our Africa. I mean, listen, I want to tell you this. I was based in China. And the reason why I left Ghana is because I thought you can never make it in Africa. And when I went to China, 
the things that I was seeing, the things that I was hearing, people just looking down upon my, uh, upon me because I'm coming from Africa. I feel like if Africa becomes stronger, or if Africa becomes okay, we'll be respected out there. Was it in your face? Would they tell you direct? Direct. What was the kind of crazy thing they'll Come tell you? Come on. Even sometimes you're going to look for a job, they'll tell you you don't look like Obama, so I'm sorry, we're not going to give you the job. That's when they need a black person. But a black person should not be as dark as what am I? You were too dark? Too dark for a job that the description is black people. So imagine the ones that they will say, no black people are allowed. I mean, you might be in a train and nobody want to sit beside you. You might be in an office and your own colleagues will be like, why are you here? So all the time you feel inferior. You when spoke the abroad. language, you understood what they're saying. Very fluent. I don't know. I wish a Chinese person is here. I would have switched the conversation right now. It is really a busy day for me since it's my last day in the country. So I had to do all my meetings the same day and my mom had to come along with me. Have you heard of African continental free trade area? This was the dream of Kwame Nkrumah and was implemented by the current African Union with the aim of Africans trading among themselves. And I think this is a good idea, but only if are ready to implement it on the ground, but not just on paper. Let me tell you something. When I was moving around with my mom, she kept on saying one thing. Oh my goodness, when I go back home, I'll have a lot of stories to tell. How come all these buildings are super tall? Because in our village, you will never find a tall building. So she's gonna go back home and she's definitely gonna tell a lot of people that finally I saw tall buildings in the city center of Accra. You know, the Independence Square, my mom has never been there. So I decided to take her there for the first time. And I could see the joy on her face when she stepped there for the first time. To my first time, my first time at what is it? <laughs> Your first time at Independence Square. Really? I I just want to tell each and every one of you, if your both parents are alive, be grateful. If one of your parents is still alive, care about them, show them love because this is more like their harvest. You know, they give birth to you, it's time for you to take care of them. And they feel so proud knowing that their sons or daughters are taking care of them. This would definitely be my advice to each and every one of you. First time, eh? Hey. I'm proud of you too. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> You're proud that you are independent square. square. Hey. <laughs> then you've made it to life, Auntie Maggie. <laughs> you've made it to life. <laughs> A day well spent with my Bob, and I would love to do this over and over again. And I hope this video will inspire you so that you can also go out there to spend a day with your loved one. Because I feel like spending time with the family brings the family together. Don't forget that family over everything and um i hope you guys like the video subscribe and be part of this youtube channel share the video so that others can also see it my name is still mr ghana baby don't forget to subscribe and be part of this awesome youtube channel